8 mm thickness that is perforated at 76 mm interval with holes of 12.7 mm to cover the bunch as it opens. Th 4. To cut down the affected banner fruits and bury them, reduce the population of insects in the fields. And 5. To remove all the neglected banner plantations as these can serve as grounds for the banner rust thrips to multiply. Minister of Agriculture, Animals and Fisheries continues to sensitize the public and calls calls up on all the relevant stakeholders to apply the relevant measures in the meantime to reduce the damage and stop further spread of the thrips. I beg to respond. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much. Next item. Statement by the Minister on the unfavorable farm gate cotton prices during the 2020-2021 marketing season. Honorable Minister, Agriculture. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, I send you to respond to a question that was raised by Honorable Carol Franca uh, on the issue of the cotton prices during the 2021 marketing season. Right Honourable Speaker and members of Parliament, Uganda exports over 90% of the cotton that is produced locally. This makes the country dependent on international determined lint prices. Cotton is similar to all international, internationally traded agricultural commodities like coffee, coca, tea. Prices go up and down in the world market according to supply and demand. Similarly, price on the local market also vary depending on the demand and supply since cotton marketing is liberalized. Right on the speaker, in November 2019, when the cotton marketing season for 2019 20 officially opened. The international lint price was one dollar three two cents per kilogram. This translated into an indicative firm farm gate price of Uganda shillings one thousand three hundred per kilogram of seed cotton. And here let's note that it is a, it takes about three kilogram of seed cotton to make one kilogram of lint. By April 2020, prices had dropped to $1.1 per kilogram of lint, which was a 17% drop, largely on the account of the COVID-19 pandemic, which caused a decline in demand for cotton and textile products. At the end of 2019-20 marketing season, actual prices paid the farmers ranged from 1,300 Uganda shillings to 1,700 Uganda shillings per kilogram of seed cotton. Cotton prices during the 2021 season. Right on your speaker, during the cotton marketing season, cotton prices improved slightly. The international price was about one and a half dollars per kilogram of lint in October 2020, which translated into a farm gate price of 1,500 kilograms Uganda shillings per kilogram of seed cotton. By the end of January 2021, 20, prices had increased to an average of $1.65 per kilogram of lean. So far, actual prices paid to farmers have ranged from 1,500 Uganda shillings to 2,000, 2,000 Uganda shillings per kilogram of seed cotton. The world overview. Right on our speaker, world all over, the textile and apparel industry has been severely hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. The global, the global lockdown and closure of many textile-related factories resulted in a decline in the consumption of textile products. This in turn reduced demand for cotton and exports from cotton-producing countries such as Uganda, consequently declined. 
the lack of demand for cotton in the international market resulted in decline in the cotton prices. In the recent past, however, more and more countries have lifted the COVID-19 restrictions and the test factories have resumed operations. This has increased demand for cotton and there have been mar marked improvements in the prices. In order to reduce the dependence on international prices, Uganda should vigorously promote increased global consumption of lint to produce textiles and garments. I beg to respond right on our speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item. Statement by the Minister of Internal Affairs on the missing parcels. Honorable Minister. Uh, right Honourable Speaker, Honourable Colleagues, you will recall that about four weeks ago, that was on the 4th of February this year, I made a statement on alleged kidnaps. At that time, I indicated that I was making a preliminary statement on the matter. Further, I indicated that I would make a subsequent statement once investigations had revealed more information. Today, therefore, I am pleased to share with you more information on this matter. Today, I am presenting to you a list of 177 names clearly identifying the person, the date when the person was arrested, the place where the person was arrested from, the reason why the person was arrested, and the case management history indicating where the person is now. I have, right hand speaker therefore, the honor to lay on table the said list. Let the records capture that, the list of 177 persons as presented by the Minister of In summary, right honourable speaker, there are 43 persons arrested for participating in riots. This must be taken into consideration, bearing in mind that earlier, police had, a re had released a list of 800 plus people who had been arrested on this same matter. 156 were arrested because they were found in possession of military stores and 17 were arrested because they were involved in meetings planning post-election violence. Six of the 177 have been released on board. In conclusion, right honorable speaker, going forward, I'd like to inform the House and the general public that a copy of this list is at police headquarters within the office of the chief political commissar. The public is encouraged to check with that office the whereabouts of their missing persons and to get processes and permission to visit them wherever they will be indicated to be. However, in doing so, we should maintain SOPs and avoid overcrowding. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Colleagues, 
Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present the list. I thank you. Well, Honourable Members, this is what was requested and the Minister has responded by giving this list of 177 people with, with the, those categories that he has, insta he has stated. Oh, do we want to have a short inter interruption on this matter? Yes. Okay. Can I start with the Honourable Samujo? You know, Obongi? It's really, it's really difficult to... Honourable Samujo, yes? Can we keep it brief, please? Thank you very much, uh, Right Honourable Speaker. First of all, I sympathize with the, the Honorable J.J. Odong. Why? <clears throat> the first time he came here, he presented 40-something names, but he was only able to account for 13 by that time. The others, he didn't know where they were. Maybe God is good. They have now reigned from, from heaven. The Minister of Internal Affairs, a general in the military, he didn't know where people were. He has now not explained where they have come from. He, he, somehow, miraculously, he has come with a list. But for me, Mr. Speaker, the most important point is that... Uh, this government now admits that it kidnapped people because the minister responsible for police did not know where these people were in fact he only knew about 44 but was able to account for only 13. now he has brought a list to tell us somehow they were there someone had them and he said i have the honor to present a list of kidnapped people which honor you should be having a regret. People didn't know where their relatives are and for you have an honor now to bring a list. Mr. Speaker, can I ask uh, the following questions? First, the Honorable J.J. Odong, who was in the military around the 1980 elections and helped uh, Geno Sare to escape from prison. Whether it doesn't bother him as a person that the things that were done by the previous military in which he served leading to the helping of General Sari to escape you, uh, you helped him whether it doesn't bother you that the, the military so many years later is doing the things that you did when you were in the military There should be no cause for excitement. These are serious matters about people's lives. Point number two. Whether it doesn't bother you that uh, agencies in our constitution in, and some other laws that are not responsible for arresting citizens, civilians, have arrested them, kidnapped them, and they are only handing over to you a list for you to carry to parliament and be happy to present it. Does it need to bother you as a minister for internal affairs? Finally, Mr. Speaker, I still have people in my constituency arrested. I don't know where they are. This list, I will be glad if the Honorable J.J. Odongo can go name by name. Tell us the reason where because I fear this parliament might be used as a, as a clearing house. Thank you, Honorable Samuju, and Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, the information I want to give the Honorable Member is that when we are demanding for these names and particulars of these people, our interest is that the public is watching 
and they want to know their dear ones where they are in particular now he is a minister he has tabled the list which is as if he's confidential and the information i want to give the honourable members that he, really we need to know the names on the record of parliament not a list is presenting i want to know my people from karungu and i match them with the list i have as well that's the information i want to give right on the speaker thank you <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, the minister says this list is available with the chief political commissioner of police. These are just 117 people. They don't take 10 minutes to read. And he says, don't crowd there looking at them as if it is a list of gold. Just present to us a list because you are asked by parliament to do so, not to come and table. There is a difference between presenting and tabling. What you have done is tabling, laying on paper. And then you are very happy to go and see. This parliament asked you to present, not to lay. Presenting means you read name by name. And then even the people you fear that will crowd at police will not crowd. This will save um, honorable members asking the same questions. I have a list that I will want to compare with the one that you are reading. Um, Mr. Speaker, when those issues are answered, then I don't have to come back and say, but I'm not hearing these ones. So can the minister, um, with the permission of the speaker, answer those questions? Mm. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, honourable colleagues, I thank the minister for the attempt he made to answer the question. Speaking from my predecessor, honourable Semuju, honourable minister, you were requested, you were asked. There was a demand for you to present, not to lay, to present the list of missing persons. I would like you to do the same. Secondly, in presenting, right honorable speaker, would like to hear this. The person, the time when he was arrested, where, when you got him into your list, and where you got him from. Because this is very important to help us to know the people who got lost before the elections, during the elections, and after the elections. Some might have gotten lost here, others in the north or in the east. So when you give us this statistics, it will also help us to know where these people are. Not so many people are capable of coming up to Kampala to go to the office of the chief political commissar of the Uganda police. And we have many official detention centers of the Republic of Uganda under the JILOS, Justice Law Ordinance, uh, other sector. Prisons, for example, police stations. If you mention a place nearer to Obongi, the people of Obongi will not have to come to Kampala. They will go to where the, the minister said. For example, they go to Penjinji prison, Arua prison, Moyo prison, if they are there. Right on our speaker, this is also good for the minister because he, if you don't specify properly, the list of people whom you have and where they are those who might have gotten lost not through your system may also be blamed on you this is also to help you right on our speaker it is on record that when this government of the nrm under the leadership of president seven came to power there was a commission of inquiry established by this parliament to inquire into disappearances of people during the body regimes of the past. Today, we have not even seen the implementation of this report, the Commission of Inquiry report. It is lying there in the library in Parliament. We have reached a point where, again, we need to establish another Commission of Inquiry. Yes, because these people who are missing, we need to know where they are. If you cannot tell us where these people are, we have to find out ourselves. 
And Parliament has that power to establish a commission of inquiry to inquire into the disappearances of people under the leadership of this government. Right Honorable Speaker, we have law and other institutions which are ordained by the laws of Uganda. But we have also identities which are provided for these people, uniforms, vehicles, official things. But you hear this thing, right Honorable Speaker, drones, drones. Can the minister tell us which vehicles were used to in the arresting of these people? Was it these drones or the Uganda police, official Uganda police vehicles? When we see the police, we respect them because these are our institutions. They are in uniform, they are in official vehicles. What should the Ugandans do when they see a kidnapper coming to kidnap a people or people in a village? What will you do if the Ugandans resist? Such people on the spot when they come to attack to kidnap people in the issue of self-defense. People coming in drones without identity, in civilians, carrying guns. You cannot tell whether these are our Uganda policemen or our Uganda People's Defense Forces men or these are kidnappers who just kidnap people for their own reasons. How do we respect the rule of law? How do we protect our armed forces if people get on into these things, families getting scared. Right, Honorable Speaker, I would like also to use this opportunity to bring this to your notice because you've not been around, as we said, know this. In Obongi, drones went there after the elections. I was followed, tracked. I survived being kidnapped by these people of the drones. I said, You, you don't belong to Uganda police. You don't belong to the UPDF. How do you chase members of parliament like this? Right now, there are people in Obongi who are missing. There are people in the West Nile. There are people in different parts of the West Nile who are being forced to run into exile again. And yet we say we have peace in our country. So, Honorable Minister, help us to know where these people are Procedure. when they were Arabs, uh, abducted. Thank you very much. Procedure. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, I raise on a procedural issue. Mr. Speaker, sir, is it, it, isn't it procedural right for you to ask the minister to first read all these names? Then when we come to debate and discuss, we'll be comparing and we'll be having that information. Was, is it procedural right that before we continue, let the minister read all these names as was directed to present the names to this August House, Mr. Speaker? It's not a procedural matter. You can make the request and we take a decision, but it cannot be a procedural matter, certainly. Yeah, thank you for that guidance, uh, right, Honorable Speaker. I would like this. Honorable colleagues, and uh, through you, Honorable Speaker, these things which are happening now are making Ugandans to live in fear day and night. The concept of peace and security does not only lie in the absence of gunshots, sound of gunshots. Even people live in their houses, on their roads, in situations of uncertainty like this, it means there is no peace in the country. So let the, gov the government help us, let the minister help us, beginning with this one, to restore confidence in us by telling us that your people are in this prison. The other ones are in this detention center. They are here. Those who are not on the list, we don't know where they are, but let us inquire into them. Therefore, let us set a commission of inquiry to know where they are, who has them, who kidnapped them. I thank you very much. Honorable members, the last time I checked the Commission of Inquiries Act, the powers of co creating commissions of inquiries, I think they were invested in the president. That was the last time I read. This time laws change quickly. So they might have changed in the course of the time I have not read it again. But it used to be uh, a prerogative of the president to appoint commissions of inquiry. That is not to say parliament cannot institute an investigation into a matter. But you may not call it a commission of inquiry because there is a commission of inquiries act in this country. 
Secondly, I wanted to find out if the members do wish that the entire list be read by the minister. Um, the list, the list, please, 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 please. The list has the names of the suspects, the place and date of arrest, brief facts, and remarks. And to take the first case of Senor Njo Adam, who was arrested at the new taxi park on the 18th of November 2020. The suspect was arrested on possession of military stores and now remanded to Maki, India. That's the kind of detail that is there. I think that's the point Honorable Member for Obongi was raising. If I don't know what, what harm it would do. My only harm it would take a lot of time for us to read the 177 names with the name, place, date, brief facts and remarks. But ordinarily I do not see any danger in, in reading these names apart from, apart from the issue of time, which I don't seem to have. If we can balance it up, if we can balance it up by saying maybe the minister can read the name and the place where the person is in. Because if by the time you go to the date, what the person was suspected of having, then, we, then, we will, then I think the rest of it will be uploaded on iPads and we can look at it. But f please, for now can we agree that the minister can read the name and the place where the person is? Would that be fair? Huh? It's already there? It's on the iPad? Actually, if you look at your iPad, it is there. But let's make that compromise. Let's make that compromise. Honorable Minister, name and place of detention. Let's make that compromise. Please, Honorable Minister. Yes, procedure? You look very different with that thing on. <laughs> Thank you for your indulgence, right, Honorable Speaker. Indeed, everyone looks different. I knew you couldn't recognize me, but thank you. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I agree to the uh, request by members that the minister reads. The assumption is that the minister's list is exhaustive. Right, Honorable Speaker. And uh, as far as I am concerned, uh, the list is even bigger. That's the minister's list. I have my own list of people that I am aware of that disappeared in the range of 423. And with your indulgence, I will lay that list on the table, implying that um, the minister could have been chosen in deciding whom to bring here and present. So, right, Honorable Speaker, what do we do with those other names we do have? that the minister did not present by bringing uh, do we abridge and present after him the organizer because I have a list of 423 persons Honorable members sometimes it's easier to receive information in whatever form then build on it because if we now say we also bring a list, I might also have my own list. Uh, another person will have another list. Then we'll spend three days just bringing lists here. And I don't know how helpful that will be. Can we take this as a guide and take an, another day to see if some names are missing, whether you have information about additional names that uh, you know where they are, and there are ref case references to them, and they're in detention somewhere. It may be more authentic than uh, uh, the honorable member coming up and say, I also have a list, because everybody can have a list. This is from the government. So my, gui my guidance would be that, can we receive this one? 
can we receive this one which is from the government in charge of the detention areas where these people are and then we see if we can proceed with the others is it possible because if we now start generating lists there will be no end to it yes honorable samuju mr speaker thank you for your guidance the last time the minister presented 44 now he has 170 something maybe he will help parliament to tell us whether now this is the only list available within the government because last time he had said 44 now 178 and mr speaker it's important for him because the summary can be given even if he doesn't give details you want to know who arrested these people because he says they are arrested he can give us a summary of who were arrested by chiboko squad who were arrested by kakoza mutare who were arrested just for parliament to know because this is important I remember, I think the important thing is that there's acknowledgement that a person has been arrested on a particular date, suspected of a certain thing, and is now in detention in such and such a place. And we have agreed that we take the name and the place so that we, the public knows that so and so is in such and such a place. Because if we take all the details, it will take much longer. And we also have other business to handle. I know this is very important. I'm not saying it is not important. But if for purposes of information, we can read the name and the place where the particular person is at the moment, so that the, uh, the, the family can know as well that so-and-so is at such and such a place. Because if we are to go into the details, it will take much longer. Can we now, can we now receive this, this list, please, from the minister? Can we receive this list from the minister first? Can we, Honorable Olanya? Is it... Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. <clears throat> right Honourable Speaker, I thank you for giving me way. Right Honourable Speaker, I remember two weeks ago when the ministry was briefing His Excellency the President. The minister made mention clearly that we have 313 people who are under detention. Surprisingly, today the minister is bringing names of only 100 and 77 persons. Right Honourable Speaker, at that time, the Minister stated that out of the 318 persons, 55 were in detention under the non-detention centre. The rest were not known. That is why His Excellency directed you to come up with the list and where those people are. My concern is why is it today you are coming with only 177? Yet the other day, you deceive Ugandans that you have 318 persons. Right on, Speaker, let the minister be serious. And as you directed, right on, Speaker, let the minister read for us the names, the dates, where this person is arrested, where the person is currently, let the minister go into detail. For example, the case in point we have now, one boy called Victor Makenya Balikudembe. He was arrested on the 6th of January 2021 from Maokota County South. Right now the family is in pain. The children are crying day and night. We would like to confirm whether the name of Victor Makenya Balikudembe is in that list. Right on, Speaker, we appreciate that you don't have time, but for the sake of Ugandans, for the betterment of our country, let us spare time, and tomorrow we can come up and continue with this particular topic, right on, Speaker. It's very important for the betterment of this country. I know time is of essence, we don't have time, but the life of our citizens, the life of Ugandans, are more important than our time. Let us spare time. Whether four or five days we handle this matter, Reverend Speaker, I beg to move. Ginger, Municipality West, East. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. 
Right Honorable Speaker, I know that when we are speaking about human rights, we are talking about something which is so close to your heart as uh, someone who has ever lectured on human rights. Right Honorable Speaker. And you were one of my students. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, what we are dealing with, I think we need to contextualize it. Human rights are in the Constitution. It's a whole chapter. A whole chapter, yes, dedicated for that purpose. Government, all agencies of the state, they have a duty to facilitate the enjoyment of the rights, of these rights. Now they are the violators. I think it makes a lot of sense for us as Parliament not to sanitize, because when we say that we want to say someone was arrested at this point by so and so, because what, Mr. Speaker, what happened actually is that the minister will agree with me that we don't know who was arresting. You see people in plain clothes, holding guns, picking people, yet the normal procedure of arrest is no, not even informing, even, not even being booked in, in the districts where they have gone to pick people. That's why we actually we have a problem. And I was, Mr. Speaker, I would seek your indulgence on this matter. But uh, yes, we respect the time of parliament, but it is equally very important that the parliament does not cover up all the minister, an errant officer who was somewhere in a particular place, even didn't follow the procedure of arrest. Because once we mention these people on this, on, on, the, on, the, on the record of parliament, many will run away from this. I want to submit to the Honorable Speaker because I know, I don't want any member to think that now it is okay for the government to arrest people, hold them in, commun in communicado, then come up with a list. It is not proper. It is illegal. I thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. What the Honorable Muhiro is proposing is now beyond what is on the, the, the what? What is on the list. And I thought we were trying to use what is on the list because we already have the list on our iPad use what is on the list for public purposes to alert the families of these people to give their names and their whereabouts because I think to the families those are important because as parliament now we know when they, who their names, what their names are when they were arrested and from where and the reason they were arrested we have them already in our record of parliament in our iPad so I thought for the public and also to balance on the time it was the name to alert the family and the whereabouts to allow them also to access where this person is. I thought that would be sufficient for the public. But now the Honorable Member is even proposing that we even, the Minister goes back, because I don't think he has it here, that we, we, we don't handle this list now. The Minister goes back, generates another list of who arrested these people, generates another column, who arrested them, and then comes back now with the five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six columns to show that uh, they were arrested by so and so. So would you ask the minister then to go back and add that column? Mr. Speaker, it's, uh, why I'm raising that? There is a tendency actually. No, 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 what I'm asking is do you want the minister to do that? M go back, add a column on who arrested them. Mr. Speaker, in my view, yes, for a reason. That actually, even where these people are... are no, no, I'm, are, not, I'm not saying that the minister should not. Is that what you are requesting? So that we just send the minister back, add another column, and comes back? M M Mr. Speaker, it is what I'm suggesting for a reason. That those who are holding these people now are not the ones who are actually arrested. You realize, if you go out every police station, they will tell you, people are just dumped at this police station. Thank you. Honorable Member, I still ask the question, what are you asking us to do? What do you want the Minister to do? No, 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 please. You are not the Honorable Muiru. You even come from another part of the country, not where he comes from. The man comes from Jinja, you come from Obongi. You cannot be the same. Right, Honorable Speaker, in the interest of time, we can take what the Minister has got, but we, we task him to provide additional information as to actual affected the arrest, as because you, the police arrest, or some people arrest, and they just so flow that police but, but you see, Honorable Muiru, uh -huh. if by now the minister would have finished the list, then you'll say, okay, now we want the minister to come with this. Now you are delaying the population is waiting there to hear their children's names and where they are. We are still talking about other things. Can we get the, the names on the record on the, for public? And then we, if there is anything additional that like you are proposing, 
can we do that, honorable minister? Just the names and the whereabouts of these people. For now, and then we see how to move. Right Honourable Speaker, most obliged. Senyonjo Adam is right now remanded in Makindye. Kasosi Wazwa Akasaku is now remanded in Makindye. Luetute Dennis he is with the police. Kiseka Boni, he is with the police. Bogere Ali Sebaduka is remanded in Makindye. Sharif Junju is remanded in Makindye. Kibirige Emma is remanded in Makindye. Mayanja Suleiman is remanded in Makindye. Bumba Twaib is remanded in Makindye. Kakai Jane is remanded in Makindye. Babire Rita is remanded in Makindi. Mwebaza Junior is remanded in Makindi. Iga Alex is remanded in Makindi. Mutebi Zubairi is remanded in Makindi. Kalule Hussein is remanded in Makindi. Mumbere George is remanded in Makindi. Basalirwa Peter is remanded in Makindi. Amis Lule is remanded in Makindi. Matovu Wilson is remanded in Makindi. Abdul Nuru Husebi is remanded in Makindi. Mutawun Gad Majid Atib is remanded in Makindi. Kadyama Alex, Aka Abdul Nasur, Aka Muna Muraru Musoga is remanded in Makindi. Wasinde Shafiq is remanded in Makindi. Seruanga Stephen is remanded in Makindi. Nkuruzisa Fred is remanded in Makindi. Bazibu Francis is remanded in Makindi. Kitamirike Altone Aka Window is remanded in Makindi. Muyomba Edward is remanded in Makindi. Bisaso Ivan Patrick remanded in Makindi. Mugume Obed remanded in Makindi. Kisosi Isma remanded to Makindye. Awuye Sharif Aka Commander Hector Aka Presido is remanded in Makindye. Kapegan Joffrey is remanded in Makindye. Intege Joshua is remanded in Makindye. Serunkuma John Bosco is remanded in Makindye. Galiwango Rogers is remanded in Makindye. Mujenyi Dennis is remanded in Makindi. Semfuma Isa is remanded in Makindi. Timbiri Richard, Aka Umar, Aka Jabari is remanded in Makindi. Okelo Maxwell is remanded in Makindi. Musamiri Muhammad, Aka Olwen is remanded in Makindi. Okelo David, Aka Amunga is remanded in Makindi. Alioni Anyuar, Aka Anyo is remanded in Makindi. Ojaiti David, Aka Bruno is remanded in Makindi. Isingo Majofre is remanded in Makindi. Kaiwa Ronald is remanded in Makindi. Shafiq Umar is remanded in Makindi. Kabale Bernard is remanded in Makindi. Kabogosa Peter is remanded in Makindi. Bulega Shafiq is remanded in Makindi. Matovu Peter is remanded in Makindi. Mawanda Shafiq is remanded in Makindi. Tumusime Rashid is remanded in Makindi. Sebu Yapayas is remanded in Makindi. Sechawa Samuel is remanded in Makindi. Matovu Shakur is remanded in Makindi. Kato Akiram is remanded in Makindi. Kayondo Hazard is remanded in Makindi. Serwada Trofazad Aka Kasanga 
is remanded in Makiende. Junju Ronald Aka Junior is remanded in Makiende. Lutakoma Andrew Aka Saido Mane is remanded in Makiende. Kajuma Amos is remanded in Makiende. Kabite Sharif is remanded in Makiende. Opit Moses is remanded in Makiende. Lutwama Moses is remanded in Makiende. Nana da Joseph is remanded in Makiende. Biamuka Mamusa is remanded in Makiende. Lutalo Alvin is remanded in Makiende. Bugeme Ronald is remanded in Makiende. Katongo Lewaswa was granted born. Musa Hamid was granted born. Nkalubo Sharif was granted born. Serugo John was granted born. Gaira Paul was granted born. Twinamasiko Ronald was granted born. Musingu si Christopher remanded in Makindia. Iga Peter remanded in Makindia. Suleiman Mubiru remanded in Makindia. Tukamushabe Tuka Silva remanded in Makindia. Kiganda Ronald remanded in Makindia. Waswa Hassan remanded in Makindia. Tomusange Tom remanded in Makindia. Soed Bosa remanded in Makindia. Nkorwa Shafiq remanded in Makindia. Kayemba Abubakar remanded in Makindia. Bunjo Christopher remanded in Makindia. Mubia Hakim remanded in Makindia. Arinaito Cyrus remanded in Makindia. Bamoza Eseza remanded in Makindia. Sentogo Rigan remanded in Makindia. Migade Kasim remanded in Makindia. Buembo Julius remanded in Makindia. Unsubuga Sharif remanded in Makindi. Kaiwa Julius remanded in Makindi. Kigozi Jamil remanded in Makindi. Bugembe Bashir remanded in Makindi. Sempi Jasaidi remanded in Makindi. Opoya Howard remanded in Makindi. Nyombi Moses remanded in Makindi. Semogere Lawrence remanded in Makindi. Sewadonda remanded in Makindi. Sebitosi Henry remanded in Makindi. <coughs> Munabi Umar remanded in Makindi. Bale Joseph remanded in Makindi. Arikunda Ayan remanded in Makindi. Senono Alan remanded in Makindi. Ashim Kadu remanded in Makindi. Sekaja Gavin remanded in Makindi. Sentamu Fred remanded in Makindi. Sentamu Fred remanded in Makindi. Semfuma Moses remanded in Makindi. Mutebi remanded in Makindi. Kwesiga Emma remanded in Makindi. Kibalama Tomni remanded in Makindi. Kibombo Ashraf, Ashraf remanded in Makindi. Sebata Henry remanded in Makindi. Akampurira Jackson remanded in Makindi. Opio Amza remanded in Makindi. Mulinda Christopher remanded in Makindi. Ekanza John remanded in Makindi. Ojok Isaac remanded in Makindi. Ngobo Kenneth remanded in Makindi. Maweje Eddie remanded in Makindi. Kameri Alan remanded in Makindi. Kisitu Swalik remanded in Makindi. Kayongo Shafik. Remanded in Makiende. Wenje Isma remanded in Makiende. Alega Alex remanded in Makiende. Senabulia Madi remanded in Makiende. Kibalama Ronald remanded in Makiende. Muslim Kabu Mugalu is before the general military court but is in Makiende. Waswa Issa is in Makiende. Simbe Francis is remanded in Makindi. John Boaza remanded in Makindi. Makubuya Brian remanded in Makindi. Gabula Haruna remanded in Makindi. Kabega Abdul Majid remanded in Makindi. Odiabo Cedric remanded in Makindi. Sali Hamza remanded in Makindi. Ntumwa Bulasio remanded is was granted police bond. Kafuma Yakub remanded in Makindi. Mutebi Ronald was remanded in Makindi. Kadir Latif 
remanded in Makindi. Katamba Arafat, remanded in Makindi. Chate Joseph, remanded in Makindi. Kweyamba Vincent, remanded in Makindi. Beriu Robert, remanded in Makindi. Seruad Kasim, remanded in Makindi. Nuwamanya Julius, remanded in Makindi. Sebi Abdul Karim, remanded in Makindi. Mo David remanded in Makindi. Abu Ramadan Saad remanded in Makindi. Male Edward remanded in Makindi. Ouma Isaac Akol remanded in Makindi. Nsamba Rogers remanded in Makindi. Kasuja Joseph remanded in Makindi. Kigozi Joseph remanded in Makindi. Lule Stephen remanded in Makindi. Semanda Jude remanded in Makindi. Noagaba Frank remanded in Makindi. Chibirango Moses remanded in Makindi. Katende, Kat Katende Bernard remanded in Makindi. Mukwaya Sa Samihu remanded in Makindi. Kisuku Joseph remanded in Makindi. Katamba Ashraf remanded in Makindi. Mugunda Joffre remanded in Makindi. Muanguzi John Aka King remanded in Makindi. Mukasa Stephen remanded in Makindi. Sozi Ismail remanded in Makindi. Katabazi James remanded in Makindi. Sempija Richard remanded in Makindi. Kasiri Huntington remanded in Makindi. Katongo Lefred remanded in Makindi. Luima Ashraf Aka Tata Emma remanded in Makindi. Amidu Abbas Aka Dogo Mazi remanded in Makindi. Kasozi Sharif remanded in Makindi. Kasato Sambwa remanded in Makindi. The place of present location is related to the reason for arrest. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I think the total number is 176, not 177, because number 166 does not have a name. So those are the names we have received, Honorable Members. That is the list that has been presented. Can we receive it and proceed with the rest of the business? So, procedure. procedure. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, we have received the minister's list. And like I stated in the earlier, it's not exhaustive. I tried to follow through my list of 423, not even a tenth is represented. And these were names of citizens presented by relatives to me as their leader, as a leader in the community, in the area, in a party. They are missing. In fact, I've given the benefit of giving a minister of the list of those of laying in parliament, the list of those presumed murdered, even those that were shot prior and after the elections and killed, is here. So the 423, not even a quarter is represented. We have received parents, wives, children of these missing persons complaining. Right on the speaker, I beg for indulgence. This probably would benefit the Minister in Charge of Security and Internal Affairs to inform the country via this address and list the whereabouts of these persons. I beg to lay this list on table for the Minister's attention and for the attention of Parliament. Right on the speaker. Uh, it's, uh, from a member of Parliament, I think the Honourable Minister will pick it from there and, and move with it as, as he deems fit. You just say procedure. Yes. Uh, 
Thank you, Rahnav Speaker. The procedure matter I'm raising is that uh, the list has been generated, but it wouldn't be procedure okay that we debate this list because there are a lot of issues that are coming out. Right, now, Speaker, the minister has read people in military detention, and the minister reading this list is a minister of internal affairs who, with the police. Now, members are confusing much India with the a police post. Now, once these people are under military police marching, that means they are under the court martial. And all these are subject for debate. So would it be procedure okay if you open that, give, give, give us some time to debate this list as we give our input? And there are a number of issues we want to raise right now, Speaker, out of your intelligence right now, Speaker. Because it is really disturbing to find the Minister of Internal Affairs reading people under court martial. The way General Kale Kaihura was kept there for 72 days. So this matter must be dealing with something else vis-a-vis -vis the people we are looking for. Right on our speaker. You see, you know, members, you cannot debate a list of persons who are in detention. How do you debate the list? But you can raise issues to the minister. Because I don't know how you debate a list. Uh, right, Honourable Speaker. No, what I suggest, what I suggest which makes sense to me, and I'm sure if it makes sense to me, it, should make, it would make sense to you as well. You, we cannot start debating or oh, saying Adam versus who. No, it would, not, it would not make sense. What I'm suggesting is you can raise issues of clarification with the minister which, to which the minister will respond. That would not be a debate. Is that okay? So we could raise briefly, quickly, and then the minister will respond to them. Okay? Uh, yes, uh, you have already spoken many times. Let's deal, <laughs> Let's deal with the member from Mao, Mao Kota, who has not yet spoken. Yes, yeah. Honorable. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. When the president was appearing on TV, he mentioned that... There are people who were arrested in MPG by commandos. And surprisingly, the name of the nine people that were arrested from MPG is not, the names are not on this list of 176. Uh, <laughs> with your guidance, right honorable speaker, for the information of the minister, I have the names with me here. It would be wonderful to read them to you so that you follow them up. Nchinga Rashid, Buama, Bu, Buama, Kawoya Baker from Buama, Chijambu Fred from Buama, Bazira Emma from Buama, Mugerwa Ronald from Buama, uh, Sechimpi Madi from Nindye, Makenya Victor from Jaramba, Mutebi from Jaramba, and Katongole from Kagenda, Chituntu, all these are from PG district. It would be useful to know the whereabouts of these nine people. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, honorable members, it might, it might be better, it might be smarter. If you have a list to, to give to the minister without having to go through the process of reading it on the record so that they can generate, they can cross-check and see what has happened with these people, then we task them later to come back and update us because this looks like this is an evolving situation and we cannot complete it now since there are still issues that are outstanding. So if you have a list, just walk write them down and take it to the minister we are, without the body now having to read the names on the record because for now we have no means of, uh, of, 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 of verifying them whether they, whether they are real people or not real people so I think it would be better if you have, a, and have some names uh, pass them to the minister but for now let's raise clarification issues with, with the minister I'll, uh, yes Manjia Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. The clarification I'm seeking from the Minister, Mr. Speaker, pertains to the recent mysterious disappearances 
of uh, national unity platform supporters in Busia. Even Mbale and the parts of those districts that are bordering Kenya. Some are suspected to have fled into exile. But because the unmarked vehicles, the drones, have been roaming this particular region, one of them, Abdallah Were, who was a flag bearer for Meiro City in Busia, that one could have been arrested and taken to unknown places. Uh, I'm highly doubting whether in the minister's list he has taken care of, because most of these names he has, that have been read are from central here. But in eastern Uganda now we have over 30 names from families actually. These are breadwinners. And so these families have been approaching us. And by the way, Mr. Minister, I'm the deputy president of National Unity Platform in that eastern region. So I'm talking from an informed position. I'm talking about breadwinners who have been uh, taken, arrested by... And these people, these, they were in, dressed in black, not uniform, civilian black, like members, black members themselves, brandishing pistols and AK-47 assault rifles. And they SMG running after Were, who was uh, captured by them, and uh, we don't know his whereabouts. So, right, I mean, uh, 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 Minister, Eastern Uganda, I think, I'm sure you are aware. If you are not, you, could you please uh, respond so that uh, the families may know? Let me have Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I would like to thank you for your indulgence in allowing us at last to have this report of a list of the missing persons. Right Honorable Speaker, with me, I also have a list, as you've guided, a list of 18 people from Chisamula village in Chotera, which has been forwarded to me as a member of parliament by Zanda Advocates in Masaka, which I would wish to forward to the minister. But right over speaker, the minister has only read out names of those on remand at Makindi military prison. But as you are aware and members, there are other many Ugandans languishing in Kitalia. Last week, as part of our oversight function, we met those people, the so-called abductees in Kitalia. And I don't know why the minister has conveniently chosen to speak about Maki Indie only and yet other facilities mention Ruzira mention Kitalia mention Masaka and many others so it, it, it could be true that what the minister has been giving parliament is only a fraction of those cases of missing Ugandans Mr. Speaker sir I would therefore call upon the minister to be honest to this country and this parliament, to tell the Ugandans the truth. You are so mean with your list. You are so reserved. You keep your eyes on the paper. You are not looking at the members who are seated before you. And this is unfortunate, Mr. Speaker, because we would like to see you to look you in the eye. And see how you how, how come you are giving us the half truth. But how else can you read a list if your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, this is a matter of great public importance that touches on the fundamental rights. I would take I would kindly take the information. Um, thank you, Honorable Sechko, for giving way 
Let me speak speaker, the information I wanted to give to illustrate the point Honorable Sechko is making. There are people who are kidnapped from where, wherever they are kidnapped from, taken to some disciplinary committees of military somewhere without anyone knowing. And eventually, the ones you are doing about in Chitaria, the relatives don't know where they were because they were quietly produced somewhere before a, 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 a major and then driven to Kitaria. So up to now, even the, 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 list, I mean the people you are talking about who are in Kitaria, people don't know they are there. Th thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Indeed, I put the prison authorities at Kitaria. How come they receive prisoners without warrants? Because ordinarily they, they should be going through the normal, the normal judicial process, through warrants, and then they are sent to those prison facilities. But they said that whether military or from civil courts, that all of them, they come with warrants. And the people who are involved there are disputing that position. Right, Honorable Speaker, I would like this house Yes or no? Thank you, Honorable Sekiku, for giving me this opportunity. Mm, speaker, sir, the information I would like to give is to the effect that when I was Shadow Minister of Defense and Internal Affairs, this kind of dirty game took place. And why the minister is very mean with the list is that what we discovered was that some of those people who were kidnapped were being kept in safe houses in each every hour of those days was costing one thousand dollars and there were 35 30 safe houses by then so i think when this is in play, there's no way you can read. Because maybe he knows the names of the safe houses or not. But I'm advising that the number, as it has been read, is more than could be kept at one place only. So if this is what exactly what is happening, then it's difficult for me to believe, even the whole country to believe. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, sir. At an opportune moment, it would equally be important that this country, this parliament, interrogates and debates the circumstances under which these people have ended up in military detention centers, have ended up being missing persons, because there seem to be uncoordinated movement of troops in this country. The president orders one direction. On the 1st of Feb, the deputy IGP of this country, Paul Rokech, also orders the same. The third day, the Minister of Internal Affairs here orders the production of that list, and nobody does the needful as per the president's directive. But now, having looked at it, that we have the 176 as per the list today. Under what circumstances did they end up in these military detention centers or went missing? Because the genesis could have been political. Mr. Speaker, this country has had a bad political history. A bad political history is being now clothed in military wares, military materials. And I, on this side of the NRM, I want to come out clean and say that as a country, NRM have never conspired to do this. There are some other actors behind this. But as a country, as the leadership where I am a member, we have never agreed to do this to Ugandans. This is putting us in a very difficult position, Mr. Minister. In a very undefendable position. There is no way you can defend this. There is no way you can defend a, a, a political difference to degenerate into court marshals of the civilians whom you know that civilians are tried in civil courts. Honorable Minister, 
I'm on your side, but I don't want to side with you on this matter. On this matter of the abducted people, abducted persons in this country, there is no way I can stand and defend you. This is a very breeding stigma. You've not allowed the wounds of politics to heal. The abduction is still continuing. Mr. Speaker, sir, and members, this morning I was at Remyaga. I passed by Remyaga police station. I went there to inquire about a case of attempted abduction by a drone, which happened to none other than myself. And the matter was reported to police in Remyaga under reference 08 of 01 stroke 09 stroke 2020, where a drone, registration number UBG 849C, that had eight soldiers, were laid me and my team as we were coming we were within Remyag. Then they, they, they broke the road. Those who had, we had guns being cocked from behind us and in front. And then they stopped us. They wanted to pull me out of my vehicle into the drone. Fortunately, the police had sent the guards. Each side cocked guns. And there was a standoff for over 45 minutes. For 45 minutes, we are dragging you, we are taking you, you are not taking him, we are taking him, we are not taking him, until we said, let's go to police. If this is a police matter, let's go to police. When we reached police, the police intervened and said, would have the matter heard the following day. Now, the occupant in that vehicle, a one major Mugabe, he's an I.O. of Kabamba military barracks. He never showed up. It took the intervention of other authorities. He never showed up up to date. So I passed there this morning to check on the progress of the case of an MP. Now, if an MP could be in such a manner, that's why I was proposing right to the Honorable Speaker that we could even investigate the circumstances of the arrest and the kidnap of these Ugandans because you find that individuals in the system, individuals, you, you know one thing, the, the, the cardinal principle of the military is the command and control. Who is commanding and controlling the security agencies in this country? If the president is saying, please come out, produce this report. So the example I have of my own case, right now, speaker, could be pertaining to all these other cases where the government is not directly sanctioning the abduction and the kidnap of these Ugandans, but there could be rogue elements within the system, right, Honorable Minister. And if we interrogate the circumstances under which those people were being kidnapped, probably would come to the root of the matter, whether there are those with legitimate reasons why they are kidnapped, and for those who may be kidnapped for political scores, for debt collection, for, for having differences over wives and women, for money. There is a lot taking place in this country. I therefore want to tell the minister that don't have a, a blanket cover for all these cases you've read out and for those other many cases that you have skipped. Honorable minister, there could be more hundreds you've skipped. Tell us where they are. And if indeed they are in your custody, let the civil processes take over. I thank you. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, 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 and for me, I would therefore move that this parliament takes this list but demands the minister and the government to produce a comprehensive list of all those Ugandans kidnapped and the circumstances under which they were kidnapped. I thank you, Honorable, minister, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've seen this word being used even by the minister, missing persons. How can you have missing persons whose whereabouts you know? If Olanya is in parliament here, you cannot say he's missing because you know where he is. Now you know the places where, the place, the place where these people are. How can you call them missing persons? So th th that's one of the confu confusing words we are using, which 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 have completely different meanings. 
A person who is missing is a person who has disappeared and cannot be traced. Whereabouts are not known. And usually in the law there are timelines within which you cannot declare a person actually missing when possible searches have not revealed uh, the location and of that person then you can now formally declare a, a person a missing person there is a there's a there used to be a missing persons act i don't know whether it's still there is there so uh, we might have to purify the the words that we used so that we don't bring interpretations that actually don't fit the situation very very well honorable members we need to find a way where we can process this thing in, in with finality the way we are and the structure of our debate is not going to yield any results from the way i'm seeing it no no first wait when i'm speaking you you you, 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 you have forgotten me now honorable sir <laughs> so it's been a long time, so you could have. <laughs> so, so usually when I used to speak, you would be sitting down. But now, you have forgotten me. So, <laughs> so the really, what I would suggest, what I would really suggest, because if there are people whose whereabouts are not known, we might need to get a process where the list like the one that has been brought by the honorable member from uh, Masaka municipality sent to the authorities they cross check with their systems they confirm that such and such a person is actually missing because if you know the whereabouts of a person that person cannot be called a missing person so if we establish because the, the thing might be smaller than we think or even much bigger than we think so would we now do a formal process? Let's receive the list, let the minister receive the list, whoever has the list, forward it to the minister. He cross checks with these systems and generates a better list of people who can now be said, no, these ones, we, we don't know where they are. These ones, we know where they are. After a period of time under the law, they say, no, these persons are actually missing. Then uh, other procedures can take place from that. Proper investigations can then take, pl uh, take, take, take place after that. But for now, we're all shooting in the dark and uh, we may not have a reasonable conclusion to this rather very serious matter, by the way. When a matter is serious, we give it a serious attention in a way that brings it out in a comprehensive way. So that, that is my suggestion. And I'm going to only now allow the member for John Am. Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. I also want to congratulate you for, for coming back to Parliament. I have just two points of clarification. One is about the whereabouts of these people. If I heard the minister well, he was talking about a police is it the military police or the ordinary police? And to that, I, I would like to find out if all these about 160-something people can, can, can fit in one place that he has talked about. The second point of clarification is can we now be sure from here that the relatives of these people can visit them and they are allowed to see them because there is a possibility that they will know where they are and yet when they go there they will not be allowed to see them so can we be sure that they can their relatives can have access to them those were the two issues of clarification i wanted to make thank you honorable speaker I only want if there are any other issues of clarification, apart from the use, the use of words, missing persons, abductions, uh, what is the other one? Kidnap. Certainly that cannot apply to government and its agencies. They can call arrest, maybe. Under the law, you do an arrest. 
and uh, any other circumstances you can do abductions and uh, kidnaps and things like that but I don't know why we're using words these days we're just using words but but there we are no, I had already said Honorable Nieto would be the last to speak. I see Nandala, Honorable Nandala Mafabi there. I see the leader of opposition. Can we, can we close this and then generate a more organized, uh, organized way of processing this matter? Can I, can I have the leader of the opposition then have you, sir? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. You know, in the north, more especially in Gulu, we don't have noob very much but a few are there even if it is less than one percent they are our people and last week i was in gulu saturday one young man who i think is a, a, a somebody in nope came to me and told me they wanted to arrest him i told him to go and report that to police and now my area of clarification is honorable minister at least i also witnessed something in luzira where somebody was taken there and actually but without warrant and i even asked those people how did you allow this person to be here without warrant that means that it happens can you also clarify to us why people should be abducted this arrest using drone should continue to go on is there any way you can stop this arrest i thought we are in a multi-party dispensation that a person is free to choose where to belong i don't want to do, i don't want to agree with what honorable theodore said that it is not an rm if it is not NRM, then what, what is happening? Who is, Who is doing it? If NRM is a strong party, a strong institution, must condemn this action and should stop it straight away. If NRM cannot stop it, then it is NRM behind it. It is NRM behind this. And they should stop it. Don't intimidate our people. Don't cause a lot of fear on people. Give us the confidence of being Ugandans and moving on. Being free. Where is the freedom? Thank you. Clarify that and stop this arrest. Honorable Minister. I thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, and I thank colleagues for the issues they have raised. Uh, I would like to begin, Right Honorable Speaker, by making some corrections. The first correction I would like to make is the missing name number 166. The name should be Musinguzi John. Musinguzi John, number 166. The second correction I would like to make is in reference to the matter you have just raised. The list reads missing persons. The word missing should be in inverted commas. The fact that, that there was a typographical error has made a big difference. The word missing should be in inverted commas because they are not actually missing, they are with us. Three, the third correction I would like to make is in reference to a statement made by Honorable Semuju. Honorable Semuju stated that I helped General Salim Saleh to escape. Kindly check your facts. The person who did that was not General J.J. Odongo. It was another person. 
and I know the person, but I will not tell you. Find out. Now, an allegation was made that this list, by, by being presented or laid on table, I was making it confidential. No. I thought it was procedurally right to make it available for all colleagues to access it by placing it in a public place. There is nothing confidential in a matter that has already been laid on table. Secondly, I want us all to agree that the matter we are discussing of missing person in brackets is an evolving matter. I started, in, if you recollect, on 4th February by informing you of 44 names that I was aware of. And I promised we would continue to do investigations. Today, I am telling you, I am now aware of an additional 177. That does not mean I have laid the matter to rest. I am continuing to investigate, to establish the matter, and as I get additional information, I will be coming back to this house to say these are the additional names of persons I have been able to establish and this is where they are. For this matter, therefore, I would like to encourage all of you and all Ugandans, if indeed you have a concern about a missing person, report to the police. Let us have the details so that we can carry out an investigation and establish and report back that the name of a person by the called Kibalama John, for example, who was arrested on the 30th of June 2019 from Kawempe, was arrested for this reason, he is here. So if I can get those additional concerns and complaints, I'll be very happy to follow them up, like indeed Honorable Mpuga has done. He has laid here and a list of 436 names. I am glad to receive it. I am going to go through our system. I will establish whether indeed we can establish where these individuals are, and I will be happy to come back here to report again. Procedure. Such cases can be managed, but uh, right, honourable speaker, I'm a member of this house, and I know this house has a government. To my dismay, right, honourable speaker, I've heard the minister now soliciting for information from members of Parliament and the public to furnish government with information about the so-called missing persons. Right, Honorable Speaker, government in its entire machinery, if government cannot have a list of persons in their custody, they are not being privately held. Order. Mr. Speaker, the Minister says if you have a person who is missing, is bring the, the is, name. Is the point of order to the Minister or to Don Bosch? I am, I am laying the background. No, 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 no. Who do you raise? It's against the Honorable Sechku. Okay. He says uh, <clears throat> if you have a missing person, please report. I will check our system to find out where that person is being kept. The minister clearly had a meeting 
that there, there is a system keeping people in communicado somewhere. Because when you bring a, a name as he said, he will go and check with the system. Is Honorable Sechkuba therefore a member of the NRM in order to express ignorance when he knows the government he supports has a system where it keeps people? And the minister says if you bring the name he can go and cross check. Is he in order? I don't think really it's uh, I don't think it's uh, punishable to be ignorant <laughs> the day they start punishing ignorance that would be the day a lot of people would have been in trouble but the honorable member does, simply does not know so I cannot rule him out of order Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker, for your guidance. But Right Honourable Speaker, for the Minister to come before this Parliament and beg from members as if there is no system in place, there is no structure of government in place, as if he is depending on other sources of information, yet Right Honourable Speaker, Detention facilities, by whatever nature they are, they are first of all supposed to be gazetted and manned by government. And it would be a question of generating a list from all the detention centers and facilities that they have. Right Honorable Speaker, in the past this house went to great lengths to fight the so-called safe houses for this very reason. And now that government has legitimate holding grounds or centers. And the minister is talking of he, he's, at a, he's at a loss. He's not in charge. The last thing I wanted to hear, right honorable speaker and members, is that you declared a stop to the further arrest of Ugandans. And those in your custody to be set free if they can't be produced in court. That would have been a more welcome statement from the minister. An assuring statement to the public but now for you to continue saying yes more will be abducted more will go missing but we shall continue generating a list the interest of this house is to have a stop over the arrest the arbitrary arrest and for those civilian citizens produce them in civilian courts in civil courts of law honorable minister please let us not settle political differences in that manner let us not do that. If indeed these are criminal are, cases, are they can be handled as that. Are you still on a so, right matter? Speaker, is the minister there for procedural right to continue running away from his core responsibilities as government and seek for sympathy from members of parliament and the public and to express himself as if he's not in charge of the security and internal affairs docket? Is he procedure right, Honorable Speaker? I'm sure if I asked you to, to rule on your own procedure, you would have difficulties. Because you, have, you were just making a, a, a complete speech. But, uh, the Honorable Members, I don't see how the public cannot get involved in this. The biggest percentage of cases that end up with, in court are actually complaints from the citizens. You find SD, station diary, number, blah, blah, blah. It's a complaint from a citizen of this country. So suppose what the minister is asking is, you may have information that I don't have. Give it to me. Give it to me. Like the honorable member has brought, the list that he has is only limited. He's saying, no, you may have, because it's the public to raise the complaint. It is the person whose person has gone missing to alert some authority that so and so disappeared on such and such a day he has not come back we don't know where he is so that the name can be captured now without that family complaining even if you were whatever how would you know so i think the point the minister is simply is saying, honorable members let's work on this together if a family has reported to you that there's a particular person who has not returned home for a period of time 
give that name to me and we'll start handling the investigations properly. I thought that that is what the point the minister was making. I could not read anything beyond that. And if that is what the minister meant, then he's proceeding very well. Please, Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for your guidance. Indeed, this is a matter that involves all of us. And the first point of call is indeed the public, and that's what I'm asking you to do. Secondly, uh, Honorable Sechikubo asked that we should stop arrests, and I am saying that is impossible. Arrests will continue in as far as there is reason to do so. Because to say no arrest, supposing there is a thief tomorrow, and then we, because you have said there will be no arrest, then we don't arrest the thief. So I cannot stand here and say there will be no arrest. No. That will be a wrong statement on my part, and I would like Honorable Sechikubo to understand that this matter will continue as long as it is reasonably carried out. Minister. Secondly, I wanted you to know Will that you get the as Honorable Sechkubo is saying, don't do this, you are asking us wrong. His colleagues are continuing to give me lists of persons they think are missing. And I welcome this and I encourage you to do that. Thank you. Clarification, Honorable Minister. Can we now go to the next item on the other paper, please? But the guidance that, the, I think the statement that the minister makes is very important. He will keep coming back each time he has done some investigation and got, then he comes and informs the public. He can inform me through the public media, but also as representatives of the people, I think it would be important to come and brief us. As you brief the general public, you could also brief us as members of parliament. Next item. item number six on the order paper, laying of papers. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I beg to lay on, ta on table the semi-annual budget framework report of 2020-2021 on behalf of the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. I beg to lay right on that. Let the records capture that. It stands referred to the profit committee, which is, I think, the committee on finance or budget. Budget, budget committee, finance. Budget. budget committee to look at and advise us how to proceed with this document. Okay. Thank you. Next item. Okay. Next item. Can we can we start with the tax bill, which is very small, one close, honourable members. Can we start with item 8 and come back to 7? Item 8 on the order paper. Bills, second reading. The excise duty amendment number 2 bill 2020. Honorable Minister. Right Honorable Speaker, sir. I beg to move that the bill entitled the excise duty amendment Bill number two of 2020 be read the second time. Is the motion seconded? Seconded by Member Honorable. That is Rubanda. That is. Uh, anyway, I see there's a comment, but I was, I'm getting. The Honorable Odongo JJ. Uh, one member for Ajumani District, PWD Eastern. Would you like to speak to your motion? Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, like you said, this is a simple but very important amendment that we have proposed 
to vary the exercise duty in respect of the undenatured spirits made from locally produced raw materials. It is an advantage that we do uh, carry out this simple amendment. You beg to move. I beg to move right on, I will speak. Thank you, Honorable please. Members. The motion is that the excise duty amendment number two, Bill 2020, be read for the second time. That is the motion I propose for your debate. And the debate will start now, starting with the report from the committee. Chair? Thank you so much, right honorable speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Committee on Finance, Planning and Economic Development considered the bill entitled Excise Duty Bill Number 2, 2020, and made the following observations. One, the bill seeks to introduce the excise duty rate on undernatured spirits made from locally produced raw materials for use in the manufacture of sanitizers and disinfectants from 60% or 2,000 shillings per liter, whichever is higher to zero or nil. This will reduce the cost of disinfectants and sanitizers so as to make the, them affordable and competitive and to limit the exemption to manufacturing of sanitizers and disinfectants. Two, the bill provides for 1st July 2020 as the date for commencement if it is passed into law. The committee was informed that the government informed the manufacturers not to pay excess duty on undernatured spirits to be used in the manufacture of sanitizers and disinfectants so as to make them affordable. However, the proposals were intended to come into effect from the lockdown period in order to have the intended effect. The law should therefore be, should therefore commence on the 1st of April 2020 when the proposals were approved by cabinet to reduce the cost of sanitizers and disinfectants. The proposed bill does not exclude refund of tax paid on undernatured spirits made from locally produced materials before 1st July of 2020. There is a need to exclude refunds for persons who had already paid the tax and included in the and included it in their process at the time of sale. Mr. Speaker, sir, the committee recommends that the excess duty bill number two amendment of 2020 be passed into law subject to the proposed amendments. I beg to move right to honorable speaker. Thank you very much, honorable members. The question has been proposed. Debate starts now on the principles of this bill. And if there is any debate, this will be the time to debate it. But if there is no debate, yes, the member for Eruta, debate. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, sir. I ordinarily would not have risen to debate because this is a small and straightforward matter. However, the submission from the chairperson of the committee has forced me to seek clarification. First, he, the committee proposes that uh, the date of commencement be taken aback to 1st April 2020. And the reasoning is that the government had communicated that the manufacturer should not pay. I wonder whether the committee actually has on record this evidence 
from government that actually it directed the manufacturers not to pay and then the committee went ahead to verify that they did not pay. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, sir, we also know that once you are proposing in this House that we should legislate retrospectively, there should be facts that are laid clearly for this House. So do we know those manufacturers that actually paid and charged? Because if you are seeking to block them from processing refunds, and yet at the same time the spirit of this legislation is that people should benefit. Now you are creating two legal regimes within the same tax, uh, uh, tax bill that one group should be able to, to enjoy the benefit and the other should not. So, Mr. Speaker, I suggest that I think it was wise for government to state 1st July 2020 as the date of commencement, and we should stand by that. If we are supposed to go back to 1st of April, then we must have all the facts relating to those companies that imported within that period, so that we know the people we are protecting. Otherwise, we are going to protect people, and the benefit will be going out there. That's the point that I wanted to make on this matter. Thank you. Chair, on this matter, debate, ginger municipality. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. I rise to support the amendment. Right Honorable Speaker, the undenatured spirit is a raw material for sanitizer, but apparently when you look at the law, it attracts 60% excise duty. And the spirit in which government had intended to lower the cost of sanitizers was actually that even our local manufacturers would compete in the sector. Right Honorable Speaker, there was a, I'm privy to an engagement of uh, the President's directive on the, on the matter as of then and the actual implementation to the effect that even when the President had directed that actually that be the case, it required an enactment of the law. I think that's what the Chairman was not bringing out to clearly because there's a presidential directive and there's a letter from URA objecting actually the President is good. The law as is does not permit so that, that is the, the reason as why I think the chairman was trying to labor about the retrospective approval as of that time. But otherwise, I think the chairman didn't table those uh, letters. But I, I want to raise by supporting the amendment that even it will help our local manufacturers participate in the business. Because even as we talk now, the bigger enterprises actually, which actually manufacture this natural spirit and also manufacture sanitizers, they are to compete the local manufacturers, because for them, they don't have to pay the 60% as a cost of raw material. So I want to support as a basing on that argument. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. West Budama, North. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. I want to thank the committee and I, I support their submission, but I need some clarification. Whereas it is okay that uh, the, the bill should be tracked back to, to 1st April, my concern is that uh, how are we going to determine these, these manufacturers who are not supposed to pay, who are not supposed to benefit from this tax fund. In fact, I agree with them. Because right now, when you look at, uh, if you went to the market, you realize that actually before COVID, the, the, the cost of the sanitizers were a bit lower. But from around April there, the cost of the sanitizers kept rising. And normally these are indirect taxes where you find that the tax is already reflected in the prices at which the, the Ugandans or consumers are paying these this, buying these, these commodities sanitizers. So my, my point of clarification I need from the committee is that uh, first of all I agree with them that they need to exclude 
all those taxpayers, I mean producers who had included the taxes in the prices of the, the final price of their products. My issue is how are we going to determine those who included the tax and those who did not? Since all, of, all these, if you look at all the, all the sanitizers, the prices kept rising. And the price is rising by addition, by virtue of addition of the tax to the, to the, the final price of the, the cost. I need to know, how are we going to sort out this? Do we have a list? How are we going to sort out those who actually include? When, because for my, my person, we all, all these manufacturers passed this tax to the consumers. So how do we make them benefit when actually the consumers have already footed the bill? So I, I, that's my clarification need from the committee. But I agree with the opposition that uh, they should be excluded. But my position is, how do we determine those? Thank you. John Am. And then, Chair. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. In principle, I agree with the position of the, of the committee. But I'm asking a, a question which is close to what my colleague was asking because I think the intention of government is to eventually support the buyer, the final buyer and in this situation from what my colleague has stated, actually the consumers have already paid some price which is higher and in which case the, the tax was already included so in this situation where we are going to approve this retrospectively what happens to the consumer that has already been paying the, the higher price because of the tax which was already included in, in the cost of manufacture? That is the point of clarification I want to, to get because my problem is with the final person that actually the government wanted to, to support and that is the consumer. Thank you. Honorable Chair. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Odur raises a concern on uh, how do we determine the manufacturers to benefit from this exception. And uh, I want to use Honorable Miru's submission to respond to him. This proposal is not intended to benefit particular companies. It is intended to exclude the excise duty on raw materials used in production of sanitizers and disinfectants. And therefore, the question of the list of beneficiaries may not apply because whoever is in production of sanitizers and is, and is using this material will definitely be a beneficiary. Another important area for clarification is on whether the committee interrogated the genesis of this exemption. And uh, we were informed by the Minister of Finance that Cabinet took a decision to find ways of bringing down the cost of sanitizers. Mr. Speaker, sanitizers and disinfectors in this situation of COVID are treated like medicine because they are aimed at preventing a certain uh, pandemic called COVID. Therefore, uh, in, uh, we don't normally uh, tax, we normally give an exemption to such products when they are being produced. And this is the background. And based on this background, the President gave a directive which directive took, was supposed to take effect on 1st April. 
And uh, URL found difficulties in implementation because there was no law. And they advised the government to come up with a bill. This bill should have been processed much earlier, but we got a technical difficulty. This is bill number two, implying there was bill number one, Mr. Speaker. This bill number one had also been returned to Parliament and came together with this one. And we got, we got a technical guidance that in order to process bill number two, we must first uh, uh, complete bill number one, get assented, and then we, that we cannot amend a bill which is not yet a law. That is why there were delays. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, how do we separate people who had already, companies who had already paid taxes, uh, who had already sold goods which included these prices? That's why we are saying that if you were involved in production, in manufacturing of sanitizers, and disinfectants, and we had already sold them before, before this law came into force, then you get excluded. By implication, this means you had already factored the tax in your final price. And therefore, government, and therefore, you did not suffer a loss as a result of of charging a high price. And that's why we are saying those who had paid should not be refunded and they should start benefiting from this exemption with the effect from 1st July. Whereas the bill comes, the law will come to in, into effect on 1st April. We are putting a disclaimer for those who had already paid that they are because with this justification, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that we go on the next stage. Is it 1st July 2020 or 2021? 1st July 2020. That is not retrospective. That is retrospective. And what about those who Mr. paid the taxes and sold their goods in, in, in August? In Mr. September, in October. Mr. Speaker, sir, we were informed by the minister that ever since the president gave a directive, the manufacturers have been not paying taxes, waiting for this bill to come into force. Okay, honourable members. Uh... Mr. Speaker, if you listen to the explanation from the chairperson, he assumes that when you produce, then the goods are bought in the instant. I'm now wondering, for those who manufactured and sold extensively over this period, they manufactured before April, and the goods were in the market competing with those ones, that did not pay excise duty. How do you come here and then now seek to protect one group and say these ones who paid the taxes should not even ask for the refund and yet the others are going to enjoy? That's my point of clarification. You are creating two regimes within the same law and I don't, I don't see us really agreeing to this. As if you have a list of people you want to, to enjoy and the others. Why don't everybody be subjected to the same legal regime? It is 1st of July. After all, that's what government the move of the bill proposed when they said commencement is 1st of July. Was Budama then have Kabula? Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker, for your indulgence. Right Honourable Speaker, you've asked a very fundamental question that who will then pay this, this who will benefit from this? Because right now, speaker, up to today, 
all these manufacturers are selling these sanitizers. And I can assure you, on the market, the prices have never gone down. They have kept shooting, implying that the component of tax has been put in them, has already been paid by the... And that's what my colleague asked, that the consumers have already paid. So what's the essence, therefore, of this bill? Because if, in the real sense, everybody has sold, and the... No, no, no but honorable... Oh, 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 oh. It cannot just be because of taxes. When demand increases, they, do you know what, what plays in the market? Also, there's a demand supply fact that in economics you would know. So it cannot just be the issue of tax. It might also be because the demand just shot up. Granted, right, Honorable Speaker, but then that, that creates a, a room for abuse. Because now, how shall we tell that right from April? It is not those other factors because now, right on the we are now making a law which will be dead on arrival. It means the manufacturers are, are already getting an, a, a, a room, a loophole to actually escape paying these taxes using the, the argument that it could have been other factors. Because for us as consumers, taxes should be the major drivers of final prices we pay. Yes have actually never gone down. Yes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker and my colleague for giving way. Actually, the answer lies in your question. To the effect that once there is exemption of excise duty, which is 60%, which is a cost of raw material, automatically the, the price will go down. I think you, you need to understand that. In as long as this bill does not pass, 60% of the cost of raw material manufacturing of sanitizer will be passed on to the final consumer. As to how is the public protected, it is going to be the, the, the question of pricing. Once this bill is passed into law and the, and the manufacturer maintains a higher price, other, other manufacturers, of course, will automatically bring down the cost. And therefore, the other will be able to compete. Then the other issue which you need to understand that the sanitizers came in the wake of COVID. As they were fighting COVID, that's why you are seeing that we must set up the prices to go down. That is the rationale. Thank you. Thank you, but uh, I think there is a missing link somewhere there. The issue is effective 1st July 2020. After 1st July 2020, these, these, these taxpayers because the law came in effect on the 1st July. What the amendment is trying to seek is, is, is take it backward to April. So we are saying from 1st July 2020, all of these manufacturers have been benefiting. That's what I'm getting. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Thiano, for giving me. One, oh, Mr. Speaker, also thank you very much for giving me an opportunity. First, to begin with, raw material imports, well, which we don't have in this country, already zero rated. They're exempt from uh, Viet. I don't know what we are ra running to. Uh, I, I want to put the information to you, Mr. Thien, to assist. So what we are raising, that the materials have, uh, are expensive because of taxes, is not true. You see, it depends on the material. If you are importing materials which are locally here, that's when you attract, attract taxes. But if they are not, if you are telling us sanitizers, uh, in materials, we don't have them here, then they have no tax. So what the Honorable Thien is raising, it has something we need to also uh, think about. One, what are we trying to achieve? If we want to waive tax for already pay a, a good consumer, eh, then there must be another method. I think the method should be, Ministry of Finance should come up here and say, we wanted to waive taxes which were supposed to be paid on sanitizers. The, not, but not to say the law will be effective from 1st July, 1st uh, April. We're making a mistake. And I think we should make better laws. And I'm sure Mr. Speaker will agree with me. So, Mr. Speaker, 
I am not, what are you talking about? I am just giving free professional knowledge. Please. Mr. Speaker, I am saying that I think the Minister of Finance, who is Honorable Nankabira now, would request you, let us not run away to committees for what? If you want those people who, who are supposed to have paid taxes between April to July, to 30th June, to be either to be refunded their tax or to assume that they are paid but they have not paid to be waived, just bring that law to say any person who paid the tax or who has paid tax from this period is hereby waived. And this should not come through the excise duty. It should come through the, 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 the finance bill. Uh, a, finance the finance act. Okay, it's a bill. But when you do like this, we're looking so ugly. It's, I, I, I went to the committee, I wanted to advise my chair, but I discovered they had already made a report. Mr. Chairman, just ask finance to go and bring a waiver between that period. But don't bring a... This will look funny, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I think, he, Right Honorable Speaker, since you are a good drafter of the laws, you should help us so that we should not create a precedence in the House that the laws of taxation can be passed retrospectively. After listening to what my Honorable Dul said, of course I'm a member of the committee, I did participate, but after listening to what Honorable Dul said, yes, there is a tax regime already. And now, we are bringing another one within the same regime. For goods, why URA refused to accept these people? Because there was no law. And if there was no law, now the best drafter, what we want to achieve. I've declared already my Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Kakosa is a member of the committee which processed this bill. I'm only wondering whether we are proceeding right when he comes to participate in the debate, when he's a member of the committee. I recall he rose on information. He said, no, he rose on the point of information. Uh, he was giving information to Honorable Member for West Budama North. Yeah, that's true. That's the truth. He rose on information. To uh, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. You know, when we are making tax laws, we have to make those tax laws when we are careful and what we are doing to stand the test of time. Actually, the best way we could do it, as Honourable Mafabi has said, if, if the whole House can allow... Can, can I finish my point? To, can I finish my huh? point? My chair, sometimes you know I don't uh, disobey you, but we have to make a law which is a benefit of all taxpayers. Please proceed, because, proceed. Yes, what I'm trying to say, you cannot create another regime within a regime of a tax law. It cannot happen. Even Parliament will look shabby that you are debating retrospectively, which has never happened in this House. So listening to the submission of members, I think the best way to do it since we are going to take tax measures which are going to happen in, 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 in April as a policy, Minister of Finance can bring that one in the tax measures which are coming in April. They start effective in July. But otherwise, we are creating a problem that the consumers who want to help, they are not going to be helped. And the revenue which was subjected to be corrected 
in the budget financial year is almost ending the government doesn't have it and it will be a problem so i think the best way is to come in those tax policies which are coming to be effective in july so that we pass it rather than passing this one retrospectively thank you honorable mayor for for, for the information right now speaker to summarize my my, my, my point it is very clear that what we are trying to do is, is, is not possible when it comes to implementation. Already, nobody qualifies. Because between 1st April 2020 and, and July 2020, all those taxpayers sold their products and the consumers have already paid these taxes. The consumers are not going to, be bene they are not going to benefit. So we don't even need this, this, this amendment in the first case because nobody is going to benefit out of it. Taxpayers paid, consumers paid. So if you are going to refund and you are saying we exclude all those who are paid, we do not have anybody who produced sanitizers between 1st April and July who has not sold those sanitizers. If they have not sold them, then they, they, they can benefit from the law as it applies from 1st July 2020. So right now, speaker, I sympathize with the, with the Minister of Finance, but I think the Minister of Finance can be advised to, to do something which is right. We can uh, withdraw this, and then we, we think of another way of helping those taxpayers who could have suffered during that period. But also think about the consumers. Honourable members, we propose laws to solve a problem. In this case, that problem could only be solved by the passage of a law. What problem are we solving by this? What is the problem we intend to solve by this enactment? Please. Mr. Speaker, Briefly, the problem we are solving is the cost of production in regard to sanitizers and, and disinfectants. We are trying to bring this cost down by reducing, by removing that tax component of 60 percent or 2,000, whichever is higher. Now, the next question is, as of when? As of when is as of first of April 2020. Up to when until when it is amended. Uh, you see, the, 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 the problem is there are only two dates. It is either the date when the no the date when that decision to for lockdown was taken or a date in the future or a date of today because you see how will it affect a manufacturer who has already factored this thing in Ju July in January this year in January this year the most thing that you manufacture for five months you mix the things the next day it is out and it is bought in two three weeks now, why, why, why backdate it to, to, to that's what I, why I ask, is it 2020 or 2021? <laughs> because if you put it July 2020, Miss. it's difficult for it to make sense. But it might make sense if it starts now or in a week or something. Uh, because Miss. now you are dealing with those beginning to do manufacturing now. Those who have already manufactured in the past, how is it going to help them? Okay. Uh, Mr. Speaker, with your guidance and also the guidance of our legal counsel, we propose that the effective date becomes the date of assent. That the date becomes the date of assent when the president assents to this bill. Yes. That makes sense to me. Yes. 
Okay? Can I now put the question? And I see Bulisa who has not been speaking on this matter has all of a sudden risen up. I hope you are not going to take us back, Honorable, on this matter. Honorable Speaker, not National Dialogue now. I'm processing a motion for National Dialogue. I'll be coming to you. Honorable Speaker, to declare interest, I'm a tax agent who has been on leave and I'm going to get active. I, in the spirit, the questions you raised were to the effect what does this bill cure and what is the effective date? And I would like to join it with the earlier submission of uh, my colleague Honorable Kakoza and uh, Honorable Nandala that just next month we are getting new tax bills. Unless the minister and the chair had come out openly to tell us which companies were disadvantaged in the earlier legal uh, 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 tax regime and therefore the legal regime then we would be targeting to make good the inconvenience they have suffered but the question again would be what of the consumers who have already paid at a higher price so i would like to almost to agree 100 percent with the uh, the, the position you are about to take. If why don't we, let me speak and colleagues and chair, I want to pray the minister. Why don't you bring a, 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 all the tax bills together next month so that parliament doesn't do a double job? No, no, no. I think, I think we are trying to be pra pragmatic here. This is beginning of March. So there is March, there is April, there is May, there is June. Okay, which are still days ahead. I think the compromise of effective date being a date when the president assents to the bill would make sense because then it operates prospectively. Because we're not going back to see who has paid, who has not paid. That is too complicated for anybody to start doing. Can we now proceed and deal with this matter? Yes, Mitoma. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, while April 2020 falls in the previous financial year, I think it would make sense if this uh, bill was to be dated or to be effective on the 1st of July 2020, which is in this financial year, so that the, 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 the law runs up to the end of the financial year, which will be the 30th of June 2021. I beg to submit. Honorable members, can I now put a question motion for second reading? Honorable members, I now put the question that the excise duty amendment number two, Bill 2020, be read for the second time. Will those in favor tell to the contrary? No. Aye. The eyes have it. The Excise Duty Amendment Number 2 Bill 2020 Bills Committee Stage The Excise Duty Amendment Number 2 Bill 2020. Close 1. Close 1. Close 1. Mr. Chairman, we propose to amend Close 1 by, by the following. This Act shall come into force on the date of assent. 
I put the question that amendment those in favor say to the contrary no. Aye. That is heavy. Clause one as amended. I now put the question that clause one as amended stands part of this bill. Those in favor say to the contrary no. Aye. That is heavy. Clause two. Clause two, chair. Mr. Chairman, we propose to rephrase the entire clause as follows. The Excise Duty Act, in this act referred to as the Principal Act, is amended in Part 1 of Schedule 2, A, by substituting for Item 3, A, the following. A, under natured spirits made from locally produced raw materials used in the production of disinfectants and sanitizers, near. Justification, Mr. Chairman, is to reduce the cost of disinfectants and sanitizers so as to make them affordable and competitive and to limit the exemption to manufacturing of sanitizers and disinfectants. Uh, the whole district. Chair, I just want to be uh, advised whether we cannot um, add a small amendment to include any other medical uh, substance. For example, we have these um, spirits which are used for cleaning wounds and so on. So we should not restrict it to disinfect in disinfectants and sanitizers only. What about any other medical substance? I just want to, to be advised. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair? Speaker and uh, Mr. Chairman, thank oh, you very much. Okay. Honorable, oh. My mother, Honorable uh, Sister Ogwal, medical facilities are exempt from... Uh, yeah. The only thing which I'd wanted, Mr. Chairman of the committee and the Chairman of the House, that we should do a definition. If we leave it in this current form, I can tell you anything and uh, abuse it. What we should do is, why don't we define the raw material specifically for what? Let us do a definition. And if you agree, in the inter interpretation clause, that material specifically for sanitizers. But that's what has the amendment is proposing. No, mi the, mi the amendment from the committee is saying, and denatured spirit made from locally produced raw materials used in the production of disinfectants and sanitizers. M Mr. Chairman, if you saw disinfectant, uh, disinfectants are very many. Even in the toilet, there are those disinfectants. We put uh, the blue and uh, green things. Uh, there's also soap for, soap is also for disinfectants. So, my, Mr. Speaker, if we are talking of sanitizer for washing hands, should be very clear. But if you bring even that, even uh, soap manufacturers, uh, you, you will have a problem. And I would plead with the chairman that it should be specifically for sanitizers. But if you bring in those disinfectors, you are making uh, it worse. Through you, Mr. Chairman. Chair. I would like to get the Honorable Mafabi here on this. In other words, are you saying in between raw materials used, we say specifically used? It, it specifically. No, no, no. It's okay. It. He wants to say you remove spirits? disinfectants. Sorry? He said you leave out disinfectants. He said disinfectants too wide. I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, not all we need to not to lose the intention of the of the of the bill. I think in this, if we use specifically use, spe, if we add the word specifically and leave this and uh, and leave disinfectants and sanitizer. I think it works. Not all uh, disinfectants are used outside the spirit of the bill. Honorable Mafal, I would like to persuade you that we add the word specifically and then we will be able to. Okay. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mafabi. I think here uh, for ease of work, not the law you are passing, not to be ambiguous. 
and when a tax collector is defining an ingredient, you must specify the, 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 the material and the code of it must be coded. So, in tax laws, that you, the spirit of that law is saying you want to reduce the cost of sanitizers and this is it what the intention of the bill so the materials which are used in those specific sanitizers they are the ones we, which you want to exempt that lowers the cost so the best drafting could be that specifically those materials used for sanitizers yeah, that's no. what the chairman has said. I think as we have put the word, the, we delete this in these effectors and put the word specifically as you have proposed. I don't think, I don't think it resolves the problem you're proposing. So, suppose you extend it, if this is the spirit in which you want to use it. Disinfectants and sanitizers used in the production of disinfectants and sanitizers in the protection against COVID-19, in protection against COVID, something like that. So that it is clear that it is for those purposes. Because specifically, it still doesn't solve the problem. So can somebody redraft it along those lines, add the additions so that we can you know, uh, produce raw materials used in the production of disinfectants and sanitizers Uh -huh. Somebody can give an extension and relate it to the fight that this specific, specific uh, intervention is for. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I understand where Honorable Nandala and the colleagues are coming from, but even uh, by doing that, you don't solve the problem. Because uh, it can uh, be used in manufacturing of sanitizer and disinfectant. But also, on the same note, it can also be abused uh, by, if it is bought by other people who are not going to manufacture sanitizer and disinfectant. I think what we need to maybe to, to create, maybe it either should come in the regulation where one must produce a certificate of sanitizer and disinfectant. Short of that, the fear of vulnerable Nandala, then it will, it will actually it will come in. So I wanted to propose that maybe we create a rider that there is a, a requirement for one to be to buy at the natural spirit, one must have uh, a license or must be certified by UNBS as a manufacturer of sanitizer and the disinfectant. I'll see maybe I was I'll propose in that direct, Mr. Chairman. Uh -huh. So, have we found a compromise? Honorable Mafabi, Honorable Kakosa, Mr. Chairman, what we are trying to do is, uh, I think, we are looking at COVID-19. And if we put in COVID-19, it means the moment COVID-19 will be over, that means this law will be not what? Applicable. And that is the intention, and what you want to agree with everybody. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, I want you to interest my chairman of the committee that when you say and the, the, the nurtured spirits made from made specifically made specifically from raw locally produced raw material used in production of sanitizers for COVID-19 the justification that as soon as this is over, we shall revert back to the normal process. No, I, I, huh? I, I, I think let's do this. Let let the let the drafting team here help us. 
the spirit of what the, the house wants to capture is that this this undenatured spirit should be locally produced as part of the raw material and they should be used for the manufacture of disinfectants and sanitizers for the purpose of the the fight against COVID-19. You you get the language and give us a draft that is good. The, the operative qualification is that it's aimed at a fight. In other words, this tax exemption is if you are making it for something else, it's not exempted. Mr. Chair, are you ready? And honorable members, while we wait for uh, that one coming up, there's a technical issue with what we have dealt with in uh, close. Because I think it's not on date of assent. The, the, the word, the, fra the phrasing we have adopted is on date of publication in the Gazette. That would be the effective date of a law if that is what you want. Which I think is the spirit of this, so the records should show that what we meant by date of uh, Ascent is date of publication because that's when it's gazetted and it becomes operational. Because when it is ascended to, nobody knows. It can be ascended to today and nobody knows. <laughs> but when it is gazetted, then the pub is for public to know that no, this law is now in force. So I think that correction, I don't know whether we need to take a decision on it. Maybe I just take a decision to make that correction. Let's go back to to one and make that clarification. Close one. Close one. I, 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 the proposal is to make it to date of publication in the Gazette. I put the question to that. Those in favor say to the contrary, no. Aye. That is how it. Close one as amended. I now put the question that close one as amended stands part of this bill. Those in favor say to the contrary, no. Aye. That is how it. Close two. Chair, are you ready? Mr. Chairman, we propose to amend clause 2 uh, to amend clause 2 as follows by substituting for clause 3A by substituting 3A. for item 3A the following and natural spirits made from locally manufactured raw materials used in the production of disinfectants, disinfectants and sanitizers for prevention of COVID-19. Yes, for prevention of COVID-19, I think that captures it. It's specific now to those that are targeting the fight against COVID-19. It's not open-ended anymore. I think that is for the tax person now to, to deal with. Yes. M Mr. Chairman, I wanted to propose a, a, a subsection immediately after that one. That uh, is what it proposes, it comes with a requirement that since we are talking about uh, manufacturing of sanitizers and disinfectants, and uh, the government has licensed people who manufacture sanitizers and disinfectants, so that, uh, Purchase, since it is in the context of COVID-19, should be accompanied by certification by UNBS. Because if we don't do that, 
people will go and say, I want, I've come to buy for manufacturing sanitizer and disinfectant, and then they'll go and manufacture water. By the time we shall go, you'll go back to your constituencies, the entire constituencies will be drunk. So I was proposing that right now, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Do we need to put that? I thought that's a requirement already. It's already a requirement in another law that you and you, anything going to our public must be certified by... If I go, for instance, to Madivan to buy the, un the undenatured spirit, I just need to present myself as a buyer. But uh, the pricing to be different, so that it remains that this is an exception only to people who are buying undenatured spirits for purposes of production, manufacture, of sanitizer and disinfectants. So at any other buyer who go, walks into, let's say, Madhavani to buy that natural dispute for person, let's say, production of warrant, that one should pay the excise duty of 60%. Because the spirit, when we are when we leaving the 60%, it came from the complaints from our constituencies. The people had bought, the, because of the cost, was too, the raw material manufacturing warrant was too low. But that was a recruitment business for everybody, and therefore that had impact on society. I beg some information. Government Chief Whip. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I understand where my brother, Honorable Mill, is coming from, trying to emphasize that people don't cheat government. However, what he's proposing sounds to be an administrative arrangement which I don't think can be included in the bill, in the law. It's an administrative arrangement and this is not the first time that we are making such amendments to exempt uh, specific areas. So those who are implementing, make sure that they bridge all that, those gaps through their implementation modalities information yeah, madam, mr chairman the information i want to give uh, the government chief people is the minister of finance is that even the one who is going to sell that in the nature the spirits you to be able to get uh, uh, a waiver zero mm -hmm. you must present that you have been one of those who have been registered for Co co producing sanitizers for COVID-19. But if you are just a Waragi man from Warukuba, or you come bare handed, I don't know, unless you, you get nothing, unless, but if you have also registered and then you use it to, to sell it to the man of Warukuba, you would have committed a, what? a crime. And uh, by the way, you are a has capacity, unless they don't want. Input, output model. Yeah. They would know what you produced and what output you are expecting to get, what you bought. So if you, you have high input and less output, then there will be a system saying that you must have uh, say, sold some of this spirit on black market. Thank you very much. And I want to thank you for irrigating my information. Thank you. Okay, members, are we clear now? Can, uh, can we proceed now, please? We, are, we don't need to over-legislate. I think the principle is uh, picked, and we, uh, we can comfortably proceed. I'll put the question... I don't really put the question, I? On the amendment as proposed by the chair. I put the question to the amendment as proposed by the chair of the committee. Those in favor to the contrary, no. The eyes have it. Close to as amended. I now put the question that close to as amended stands part of this bill. Those in favor say the contrary no. Aye. The eyes have it. The title. The other one now, the new clause now falls by the wayside. Mr. Chairman, with the amendment of uh, clause one, the new clause corrupts. Okay. I now put the question the title to this bill, remain as title to this bill. Those in favor to the contrary, no. There is have it. Motion for the House to resume. Honorable Minister. Mr. Chairman, I beg to move that the House do resume and the Committee of the Whole House reports thereto. 
Honorable Member, the motion is for resumption of the House. The Honorable Committee of the Whole House report. I put the question to that motion. Those in favor, say aye to the contrary. No. Aye. No, he's happy. Report from the Committee of the Whole House. Honorable Minister. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to report that the Committee of the Whole House has considered the bill entitled the Excess Duty Amendment Number 2 Bill of 2020 and uh, passed it with amendment to Clause 1 regarding the commencement date and clause two regarding the definition to do further clarification i beg to report motion for the adoption of the report from the committee of the whole house honorable minister right honorable speaker i beg to move that the report from the committee of the whole house be adopted Honorable members, the motion is for adoption of the report of the Committee of the Whole House. I put the question. Those in favor, say to the contrary, no. There is have it. Bill's third reading. Honorable Minister. Right, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Excise Duty Amendment Bill Number 12 2020 be read for the third time and do pass. Honorable members, I put the question that the excise duty amendment number two, Bill 2020, be read the third time and do pass. Will those in favor say to the contrary? No. Aye. There is have it. A bill for an act entitled the excise duty amendment number two, Act 2021. Congratulations. Oh, no, that is date of passage now. Honorable Minister, thank you. Chairman, thank you and the committee for processing this and members for this debate. I think it was involving. We need to engage in this spirit to have to pass laws that are beneficial to the targeted uh, group of people. Are we able to handle another bill? Honorable members, the time being what it is now, we will not be able to proceed any further. We started in the morning and thank you very much for coming in the morning to enable us process this business this far. This house now stands adjourned to Tuesday, 2 o'clock.